an audience while he does his thing. Go ahead. There'll be plenty of time for questions. Um, okay, my name is Chris Andrews. I am the account executive for uh, Henderson County, as well as most of the western part of the state, uh, for Printelect. Printelect is a Newburgh, North Carolina based uh, company. We service the elections equipment and we sell the elections equipment. We are a representative of ESNS, Election Systems and Software, who manufactures the elections equipment. Um, we are their representative for North Carolina, South Carolina, and Virginia. ESNS is the largest of the manufacturers for elections equipment. There's three or four or five. There used to be a lot more, but there's been consolidation as well as some people go out of business. But 65% of the registered voters in the United States are represented or are voting on election systems and software equipment including the entirety of North Carolina. Um, Print Elect is their representative, as I said, and we have about 35 people, including technicians, we have coders, we have salespeople like myself, administrative staff, and um, field service. Um, we are based out of New Bern, but I'm based out of Raleigh. We have some people based in uh, some southern part of the state as well. So we, uh, we service the M100s and the Ivotronics, which is what you have right now, the Ivotronic machine. In 2006, I believe those were implemented. Um, the RFP at the time said that for the state contract, that it called for 10 years of usable life for the elections equipment. 2006, you know, we're coming, we're coming up on that and uh, the equipment will continue to work because in North Carolina we service it a little bit better than anybody really in the country. We have a preventative maintenance every year. That doesn't happen every year, everywhere. We have good technical staff and we have good staff in the elections department. That Our, our machines are run pretty well and they will continue to run, extend past the 10 year life that they've been called for. Obviously incrementally things will fall apart on a couple of them, you know, as machines get older the technology um, gets worse. <laughs> like we got some more people joining us. Um, there is a piece of legislation that outlaws the use of the Ivertronic in its current form in 2018. So that's, that's the way the legislation reads right now. It, it, you have to have a paper trail and a paper ballot um, we're not sure if it's going to stay the same or if there, there's actually some legislation, I believe, that uh, will, be, uh, will be introduced maybe to go against that or some language to be changed in the bill. But right now, Beverly and others have to plan as the legislation reads right now. So that would be meaning moving away from the Ivotronics and to two scenarios that could possibly happen. The optical scan unit, which is a paper ballot system. It is what uh, over half of the counties use currently. Um, not in this form. This is the newest one, but they utilize the M100, which was this, this guy's a little brother. Um, and we have about 15 counties that are utilizing the new version of the M100, the DS200. Uh, since this is not an optical county, you guys aren't familiar with the old equipment. I'm not going to go over what is better on this machine than it is on the M100. I'm just going to kind of tell you about the optical system as it, as it goes right now. This is a plastic ballot box. This top portion is a case for the actual machine. Um, and we'll go over that in a little bit. But it just takes an, an optical a scan sheet, a paper ballot, and there are bubbles to fill in. Your entire election is on your one ballot. You would fill it out, the write-ins are there, it's, it's, you get handed your ballot at a check-in. Um, we, can, we can go through that process now if you'd like to. Um, the tabulation is that you're going you're gonna to vote your ballot and then you're going to insert it into a tabulator. So with the Ivertronic system, your vote is actually cast on the PEB. 
as opposed to here, this precinct tabulator, one of these in every precinct, unless it's a really odd circumstance where there are so many uh, ballot styles and you're coded by, by precinct. There, there's really not much, not many circumstances where you would need more than one in a single precinct. Everybody in an early voting site as well would take their ballot regardless of what the style is and they would mark it and then they would, uh, they would insert it into the tabulator. The tabulator would take all the votes for the day or for the early voting period. And inside here you have a USB drive that is industrial grade as well as encrypted with the election that would that it not only does it tell the DS200 what ballots to accept, it also captures the votes on here. No voter information except for a random randomized um, no, series of numbers. There's no name or voter, voter information stored on your ballot. But it takes this, and then at the end of the election, when the voting period is over, you would take the flash drive and you would take it into your central uh, location in your elections department, and you would upload your results onto your Unity system. And from there, you, you would have people bringing in those media cards from across the uh, from across your county, and then that's where you would upload your results. Um, so that's that's a major difference between DRE and this. This is taking a it takes an image of both sides of the ballots, and that's how it tells what a write-in is. It's it digitally diverts all the write-ins into a specific folder. reopen the poll. So what's going, what would happen is you would come in, you would check in over here at your laptop, poll book, whatever your setup is currently. Uh, you guys use so or you guys use the over okay, the, the laptops that are provided from the state. You would check in just as you do now um, to verify the information. And then instead of being handed a PEB that is yours, you're you're handed out of the ballot styles that you have, whatever your ballot style is you would be handed just a blank ballot. You would take that ballot into a voting booth, which would be somewhere here, I would have brought one. Um, you would take it into a voting booth with privacy panels and you would cast that vote by yourself, just like you would on your iVotronic terminal. You would then take that and you would come to, if there's a line here, you'd stand in line. If not, this would be located, somebody who works for the county would stand by here. And, it help with uh, would help with feeding the ballot into the actual machine to tabulate that person's vote. So right now we're in voting mode. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to fill in the ballot very quickly. Any orientation. I haven't opened the back yet. There it goes. It gives you instructions to tell you what the, the jam has been cleared. I just cleared the jam because I have the I have the lock up and I'll show you that in the back here is where you have the power cord and also there's a lock here to lock in um, the ballot slot that's at the bottom. You can tell that there's a paper jam here because you can see the paper path through this, these windows up here. But to continue on down the line, um, I'll just do another bit real quick. You feed your ballot in. This is a blank ballot, so if there was no problems with it, it would just cast it. But since this is a blank ballot, you've made no selections on this ballot. Do you want to return your ballot? You can do that. <coughs> Send it right back to you. Your ballot was not cast. Or, and it does this for over votes as well. Or you can turn it off so it doesn't do that for over votes. If you're doing administrative ballots. You would cast your ballot. Your ballot goes through here flows down into um, 
the, the tote bin that's at the bottom. If the, this tote bin that's down here is very useful for carting the ballots in and out. It can be locked in here. It's got two separate keys, so it could be your Democratic or your Republican representative. Could lock it and unlock it. And then it's got wheels on it and can be rolled around as well. 2000. They fall really well into here, nesting wise. Uh, when this is not in, you can, this is still utilized as a ballot box. They fall well too, it's got so much space, but they don't nest perfectly as they do when, when this is in here. It's $150 on top of the quote that you would already have. Um, if this goes down for whatever reason, uh, you have to have a contingency plan, obviously. And that would be this. This is the, uh, the emergency bin that would slide in through this slot right here. When, when, it, when nothing's wrong with it, you would keep this slot up. So you couldn't put a ballot in there, but when it's in emergency mode, you would keep it in there. This would be your provisional bin to, to keep you uh, voting until uh, a replacement scanner comes or you know, until the end of the night. Uh, once that is done, you would take, at the end of the night, you would, like I said, you would take the USB drive and you come to your elections department. Hang on a second. If you're going into that slot, has it been read? No. no. Okay. Can I ask you that question? If, if it's going in there nesting and it's the right ends, do they still just go in that same nest? They do. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, so there's no bad news. There, there's no, the physical diversion is really, it's a variable that the industry is moving away from. Okay. It's another thing that's in there that could be moving around that could malfunction. And also, you don't want to have to go in every night and open your ballot box and pull out ballots. There's a lot of handling room for human error. So what the new technology is, is digital diversion. Instead of the machine noticing that there is a write-in candidate marked on here for one of the contests, Currently what happens in an optical scan system is it notices that there's a write-in and then an arm that's down in the ballot box switches and puts it on a, to a different side of the ballot box, which isn't an efficient use for, of space either. What digital diversion is, is it's taking a digital image of both sides of this. So when it does notice that there's a write-in candidate on this contest, um, best vocal artist, so somebody wrote in share, it would notice that and it would uh, put those into a folder, a, PD, a, a JPEG image of both sides, because it takes a JPEG image of all the ballots anyways. A JPEG image of both sides into a specific folder it would prompt the elections director to go into that folder and look at the write-ins right there, instead of going and handling the, the ballots, going into every ballot box. What that also does, is make it makes it so that the only thing that needs to be taken to the central location is this thumb drive, as opposed to carting in all of the ballot boxes on election night. It's a view only capability. What's that? On the on the right, it's a view only. Absolutely, yeah. View only. Um, it, all you need is this, because it's got the right ends already separated out for you. So digital diversion. Uh, I talked to Madison County, Kathy, uh, Kathy utilized it and I wanted to know how the digital diversion was and she said it was a lot easier than the process they already have. What yes, if that uh, gets corrupted somehow, is there a backup? There's a space for three USB drives right here and a fourth in the back for redundancy. Does that come with the machine as quoted? One does. One does. Mm -hmm. It's just a standard USB stick, right? No, it's industrial grade and it's encrypted. It's certified with anything that you use on a, on a voting system when it's certified. It has to all be certified together. There can't be any consumables that are outside because you have to, if something goes wrong, you have to take the liability off of your staff and your county for choosing a different vendor or staples for these USB sticks. You need to always go be able to go back to us and us go back to ES and S for liability reasons. So anything, whenever a voting system is certified, it's certified with every peripheral, every consumable. So this is the specific ES and S uh, 
thumb drive. And if somebody just, this is under lock and key, but if somebody were to just snatch it out somehow, if your poll worker left it open, um, it is encrypted. It can only be, it's just a jumble of numbers and letters unless somebody has your Unity system into your election, which, you know, so it's encrypted to the point where it's so not. Somebody just can't walk up knowing there's a USB port there, stick a USB port stick in there. No. And get the readings. No, they can't. Okay. Um, so may I ask a follow up there then? So like on our iRoads, um, we can reprint, you know, a, uh, we can, uh, yeah, reprint the, the summary. So if, if, can you do that? Does that machine hold the votes as well? In other words, could I put another valid USB in there and read to that USB like I could on the iPhone? I don't believe so. It prints a results report in a zero tape utilizing this printer. Um, but I don't, I don't think you can just insert a, you would have to close it the bolts. Recollect was the word I was looking for. So is it possible to recollect the bolts onto another USB? You don't think no. so? So we definitely, for redundancy, would be looking at two. I mean, if you wanted, we'd have to make sure you had two copies, sure. two USBs. Sure. Is that correct? Yes. You said it would do up to three USB? Four. 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 Mm -hmm. Is that a dot matrix printer, or what is, what is it? So this is a thermal printer. Thermal. Mm -hmm. Okay. And it'll go for how much output before you have to replace the cartridge or whatever? Uh, the, the cartridge is, I don't, I think it's rated for a decade or something. It's thermal printing, so it's, it's, it, there's no consumable ink that you have to worry about or anything like that. Um, Paper that is thermal. Printing. Right, so it's just heat. Right. Uh, and it's, you know, the rolls. I've used this roll for about a year or so, but it, just for test purposes. But just a thermal roll, you have to make sure it's facing the right direction and put it in. But after that, it doesn't print anything after each voter, only at the end of the day. Right. Okay. And you can get two yes. copies at the end of the day one to post at the mm -hmm. precinct for whoever to read it, and then one to go to the board. Right. Okay. It, and you can program that within, within your Unity system. Um, Results report. There's a lot of administrative things that you can get uh, reported once you close the polls. Uh, there's obviously a visual aid here uh, for, for help. There are some tools that you can get in a back end administrator side. There's a help screen that you can customize to whatever you want. If the voter does walk up and for some reason just say the person that's around here is occupied and they find the help screen, I mean, common voter terms, over vote, under vote, ballot not recognized, which would be the prompts that you would see if something, there's an exception to your ballot for some reason. Um, you know the law is still that the uh, voter is able to receive up to three ballots? I believe so. Still three. Yeah. Uh, I want to move forward from this just for a second, just to talk about what happens for ADA devices, obviously what you have right now is an ADA version of the terminal that you already have, the Ivotronic. You might tell them there is also the Automark. Yeah. It's still so oh, sure. Wide, it's sure. about 10 years old. It is, and so it's about... So it wouldn't be a good, wise decision to spend money on that equipment. No, especially because the cost isn't that much different. Right. Um, this is... This is fully ADA compliant, which is something you have to have in every single precinct in the case that a disabled voter comes by. You have to have tactile feedback uh, pad, which uh, for, for uh, sight impaired. You have to have a sip and puff machine for a paraplegic or somebody who could not actually physically touch a tactile pad or the screen. It's fully touch screen. Um, you have to have headphone jack for your audio. It has to be at a certain level, as you guys know already. You would insert your bl blank ballot stock into this, and this is going to, as opposed to read your results, it's going to actually, mar it's a ballot marking device in this instance right now. In an optical scan environment, this machine is a ballot marking device. It's got zoom. It has contrast for sight impaired as well. Touch screen, go through the same ballot that I went through over there. Right into right here, you would just type those out. This is gonna take you to a results screen where you verify your selections. 
And then if something's wrong with one of them, you can go directly back to that contest from the results screen. If nothing's wrong with it, you're going to hit next on your verification page and you're going to print your ballot, print your card. Uh, so it is actually marking the ballot for you in this instance and it, you would take it out and you would have your disabled voter, which this is a, a, another, a benefit as opposed to what you have with your Ivatron right now. You would have your disabled voter input it to the same place that your normal voters would. So that's, that's a big thing in the disabled community to be able to have the same experience. Um, there is the Automark, which the only difference with the Automark is it's a lot bigger and you have to, um, you have to use regular stock as opposed to the, the smaller stock. This smaller stock is kind of the way that voting is going. It's print on demand. You know, if you're wasting a lot of ballots in an optical scan environment because you have to order so much overage because you never know who's, how many people are going to show up, what your turnout's going to be. And then when the election's over, you have so much waste that you have to get rid of. You also have to store it on the front end. With this, you're inputting it into the machine. You're printing however many you do, and then you carry on the next, to the next election with the same stock you've already purchased. Chris had a one-stop side of using Balatar or ballot on demand. I as I understand it, we print the full size ballot. Yes. For the voter tomorrow. Mm -hmm. um, and then it, they it, would simply insert it in the machine. Because we vote over half of our voters at one stop in our county. Yeah, yeah, I remember you telling me that. Yeah, that uh, band is very good for a county like yours if if you were to be optical scan. What ballot on demand is is kind of like printing on demand. You would check into your station over there. It would know within the system what ballot style you would take, and then it would print on down here where your poll worker is down here, not in the check-in station. It would print the ballot. Uh, you would scan, scan it in, and your voter would come and pick up their ballot and then go mark it. So that way, you have to have some emergency ballots behind you because you just have to. If the printers go down, what's going to happen? You have to keep some, but you don't have to have near the amount that you do because you're printing them as they come. So it's a, another waste saving option. Buncombe County use, uses it. Um, it's, it has saved them money, but really where you save with the ballot on demand system is you're not having to do the math on the front end of how many styles to take to each early voting site, which is really just guessing. It's a lot of guesswork and then if you're running down on one style because for some reason a lot of people from District 8 came. Uh, you have to send a rover back out there to, 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 to uh, replenish their stock. And that's, that's a lot of time putting thought into that. Every night you have to see where your levels are for each individual precinct. So that's, it's made um, Buncombe's uh, election workers be able to go home a lot earlier during the early voting period, which as Beverly can tell you is invaluable. Um, uh, on our IOs with the ADA, it's all, it's, it's all audio, and you know, you know mm -hmm. the, the whole ballot comes through audio, and they have some physical buttons that they can actually sure. press. How would a blind person um, mark a ballot on this? They would have, like, there's the braille on here. Okay. Yeah. So you've got a pad and then the uh, instructions come through the through. audio, the right. mm -hmm. and so basically it'd be the same, same, thing. same type of process. Yeah. So a little bit there. quicker. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> there's no voice recognition in that a person so blind he couldn't figure out the keypad. Mm -mm. You, you can't you can't speak it to to the device. Um, they're going to have to be able to read braille, touch the screen, uh, recognize the tactile feedback, or sip and puff. And it's all ADA certified by um, you know American Disability Act standards. Mm -hmm. EAC certified. This is EAC certified as an ADA marking device right now. This is EAC certified and state certified as well. Okay, it's all brailled out. Any other nice. questions from anybody? This is one scenario. So if there's any questions about this optical scan environment, which would be an option for you guys to go to prior to 2018, um, it's, it's a system change for sure. Uh, but 
if, if you have any questions, let me know before we move on. Can I also tell them a little bit about, the, unless you've got this on down the line, about the large tabulator that we would use at the office? Sure, sure. So this is a precinct tabulator. You can have one here at the office as well for your absentee um, and your administrative ballots, basically, the ones that you read in here. Uh, there, there is a central tabulator that is high speed. This is reading, I mean, you saw how, how quick it is if you have uh, what did, what do you vote absentee on a presidential election number one yeah a lot four or five mm -hmm. absentee in presidential mm -hmm. yeah, yeah four to five at least then uh, okay at least that so that's going to take a lot of time going through a precinct tabulator central tabulator is high speed it's it's a it's a machine about this big and it's reading 300 ballots a minute so it just shoots them up and, and it has three different trays for you know exceptions or uh, over votes and votes that are counted and it does it utilizes the same USB stick to tabulate those votes on a much quicker scale in a recount it w it helps a lot I've got so much interest after this recount that happened um, last election that yeah. uh, a lot of interest in this high-speed tabulator because otherwise you're doing it by hand we spent several hours just trying to tabulate what 2,000 ballots. It was at least a day. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Once you hit a certain threshold, that that is a, a good option. Also, we are looking as a, at a county with the system with a complete new unity system as well. Is that correct? What's that? We, we will also need a complete new unity system to operate this equipment. Is that correct? Not completely new Unity system. Um, it's it's an upgrade, new new version of the software, definitely. Yes, sir. Um, two things. Number one, the voter votes on that screen by touching it. Yes. Talk about the technological improvement with this kind of touch screen versus the current electronics. Is there a parallel a parallax parallax problem and does this need to be calibrated? It does need to be ca calibrated. Um, Talk about this. W once a day, when you're opening it up, it needs to be calibrated. But beyond that, it's not going to prompt you. Once, you. once you're opening the machine, it, past that, it's not going to ask you for recalibration. It holds it much better than the iVotronic does currently. It is, it is a new, it's, you can come up and feel that it's not the same type of screen. Do short people and tall people have a parallax problem with this? Not so they'll hit the, the, the complaint. The complaint about touch screens is I voted Democrat and I went Republican. Sure. Or vice versa. Does this eliminate that problem? I can't say that it completely will ever eliminate that issue. People saying that they've done that, but it, you, if it's calibrated, then they are able to. It's spot on. As soon as while it's calibrated. Now, if there becomes an issue, you have to recalibrate it. That's why, also, I mean, nothing's 100% ever, but that's why there's a verification screen that you saw that you can verify your information, what you voted for. That's also why, before you put it in the tabulator, it lists everything out here. This is a another verification point where they can look at what they voted for before they put it into the tabulator. Uh, now the second part of this is let's walk through the process. Mm -hmm. uh, does that machine work for the regular voter or just the uh, disadvantaged voter? It works for all voters. All voters. So I'm a voter, I come in, and I check in, and I get verified and get my ATV, authorization to vote form. Yes. And then I walk over and the clerk, the election official on duty, takes that and they plug something into this machine that gives me the right ballot. Not necessarily. That's how it works right now in your Ivotronic circumstance, correct? How will that work? That so will the work. The voter gets the right ballot. That will work in this, you check in, and then there is a thermal, your, your ballot stock is sitting right here. There is a, a, a thermal printer as well that sits here. You input the ballot, it prints that particular person's ballot code on, this, on one of these top bars. Then they take it themselves. Over to this machine. Right? Over to the machine. They input this into the machine because that's the first step. You got to put the, the, slot? the slots right down here. Okay. So that's put the first step. The machine, so, and then sure. on so, the screen comes essentially the ballot in electronic form, and they vote. The, yes, sir. 
Absolutely. Okay, once they voted it and they verified it, then they hit a button and it comes back out. Sure, sure. So we'll walk then through it one more time. Then they to the next machine like yeah. this one sure. and put it in where it is counted. It's the yes. exact same process that he just showed you with the ADA. Sure. The, the exact same process. I learned with repetition. Yeah. Well, let's do it. you realize it's the same it's process. It's the same process. Let's do it again. Somebody comes and checks in. The stock is on the printer. They check in. The, 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 this poll worker puts the stock in the printer. Prints a, a barcode on here with that particular person's election on it. Well, it gives him his tailored ballot. Tailored ballot. Your ballot. Essentially, the PEB that you that. Which stands PEB means personal uh, yeah. electronic ballot. Electronic ballot. Go ahead. So it scanning scans your card. First step. Yeah. From the the US the same USB drive is in here with all the ballot, the election definitions, all the ballot definitions. From that barcode, it reads what your ballot is, pulls it up, you vote it. You look at your selections, which is after the ballot is done being marked, it takes you to a verification screen. It's got the contest up here, and it's got what you voted. Contest voted, contest voted. If you have a write-in, it shows what you have written into that contest. And you I'm assuming it would show you if you didn't vote in one of the races. Just sure. like the I vote does. Yep. Does it, have, does it have a way of going back if somebody gets to that point? They say, well, I voted for Boyd and I meant to vote for White. Can he go back and correct that? Absolutely, and they don't have to go all the way through the ballot again. They don't have to backtrace their steps. Once you see everything up here, you click directly to the contest you want to go back to. You make your selection from vanilla to chocolate, and then you hit next. It takes you back to the verification screen. So it's very, very quick to do that. Right here, I've got a warning that says contest not fully voted, no selection made. If I want to continue, my verification is done. I'm hitting next. I'm telling it to print, print the card. So I skip that vote. What's that? Uh, skip. Just skip it. Yep. Don't want to vote it. So basically, the flow through the personnel open machine wouldn't really matter which one they use. Except ADA is that specific machine. Sure. Um, and then once again, it's got all. And I'll just pass this around. It's got all the contests on there, and it has what I've voted or what I've written in. So once again, you're verifying your selections. Chris, uh, on the when you were talking about the printing that originally to bring it to the machine. So at our registration desk, we're already having two overlap tops with printers each. Mm -hmm. So are we talking about having another specialized printer hooked up? Yeah, yes. a very small printer. And can that, and in your experience, because some counties are already, surely someone has over it and has done this, there are what, 13 counties? Do, can they hook that up to the same laptop or are we going to need a third laptop? That is only for... We've kind of gotten that. That is only for this machine. Right. No. So I understand that. So, but when they check in, are we going to need a third computer? I guess is what I'm asking. Or can we attach that specialized printer oh, to yeah. our overlap? No. It it, it will be an export and ASCII file out of over. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. For the. But we only need one of those. Yes, or two. It depends on your check-in stations. Sure. Um, for yeah, and, and you pointed this out, I'd like everyone to be aware, right, that this machine, if it is used at the same rate as our ADA machines, would only be used by one or two people per precinct sure. at most, mm -hmm. at the maximum. I don't think we had one at the whole yeah. So that this, yeah. this machine, that it, it will not be used frequently, even though we're required to have it. You're required to have it, and they mostly catch, catch dust. You see most of your flow over this machine. Absolutely. All of, yeah, all 99% of them will go to that one. Yes, that is correct. Now on this machine, you wouldn't have to have, just strictly this, you don't have to have a printer because you're just handing out ballot, a ballot that's already printed. It would be a very much more costly system if we went to only using the express vote, wouldn't it? Because we would have to have a lot more of the sites for the voters to vote on. A lot more of the what? The, express votes. We were using them like we were using them. Oh, sure, kind sure. Well, equipment wise, equipment wise, but if you think about it, throughout the longevity of the, of the lifespan of the equipment, of, about how many ballots you're wasting. Right. To, you know, for print elect, it's probably better, 
better suited for you know optical scan, but we have this DRE system that counties will have to, have to want. I would say upfront it is a hundred percent of more expensive cost to go to this because of the amount of machines you have. How many Ivotronics do you have? Three average. Oh, in each precinct. What, what's an average? Three to the average is five to six. So five to six, you'd have to have five to six of these for that's what your uh, what your registered voters numbers call for. You would only need one of these. So you're right. However, you wouldn't be wasting ballots with this system, which is a cost you're not incurring currently. Early voting here at the line from out the board. We had enough places where I can fill in my hand. That's pretty quick to read. That's, that's the answer. Yeah, the line's not going to be right here. Okay, the line's going to be at the check-in still anyway, just like it is now. Yeah. That's where the line is. Mm -hmm. And that's going to get worse because we're going to vote. Voter ID. Yes. yes. Talk a little bit more about the voter voting, uh, the voter marking a paper ballot. Okay. Because right now, they check it, yeah. the X's, mm -hmm. they scrub it out and try the other one. Sure. How will this be better? This is the top of the line in terms of image recognition technology. It's not just a Scantron. It actually it, it thinks about how the voter would vote. Obviously, there's stray marks, so you don't want to count those. But if there's just a check or an X, um, it takes into account where exactly that X or check is and if it runs through the center and what the percentage is it's, there's an, there are algorithms to really prioritize where the marking goes through. So there's a lot of science that goes into it. So it might read a check and an X if they're yes. in the right place. If they're in the right place and they're the, the right width. You know, if the, a certain percentage threshold is met within that check. Now, if, it's, if, you, if, you, if you write very lightly and check very thinly, even if it goes through the center, it's not going to count it. All right, in which case the machine rejects the ballot back to the voter and says do it right now. It says that or it tells you that you've undervoted it and, it, and it'll, it, you'll, you'll recognize that you've undervoted that contest that you actually didn't mean to vote. You'll return it as opposed to casting it. I would recognize, I mean, I meant to go green, but I hit blue. I erase it, what am I doing? On my physical, it's full darn. I didn't mean to go yeah, well, You can, cast. You can spoil vote. that you ballot. You have three ballots. Mm -hmm. So oh, you, don't, you don't erase it, you get a new ballot. Right? Yeah. Okay. Up to three times. I'm, I'm not 100% sure about that. that. After that, you throw the vote around. You throw the vote around. Hey, 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 yeah, I mean, I'm sure you would file some sort of... You can file a provisional and then you have to take up a, a case with the state election. Okay, that's Yeah, so you, you would you would you would actually vote a ballot and then you would give it to your precinct your your uh, poll worker. They would give it to the and then I think you can file for something with the state board. They would have to approve your provision. So you still you don't leave there without voting. Let's go back to what equipment I can envision at one of our thirty five sites. We're gonna have one machine like this one and they're gonna have about five of those. No. Of which one is one of those. ADA. Just one of those. That sounds like a point of congestion. Just w one of those, but those are only voted with your disabled voters. It's a 99 Out of the 65,000 people, vote only three people. All right, but I thought that that machine could be used by the regular voter as well. I don't know if they, you can use them concurrently, simultaneously, but not in this iteration right here. All right, what does the machine look like? is going to be used by the regular voter, of which we currently have around five in each of the three. Okay, patients. so we are switching from one circ one situation to another. So one so. set of cir circumstances is you walk in, you get your, your ballot, and then you fill it out at a voting booth. Manually. Manually. Yes. Fill it in, and then you take it to this machine. Yes. Th in that situation, this machine is only for a disabled voter. I understand. Okay, okay. now we're switching gears. Now we're talking about utilizing the express vote as a tabulator, which will be going to the EAC in a month. It is not state certified yet. But what it is, is you, this would be the machine that you would have five of. You would put your card in, you would check in, get your barcode written, 
you would take it to the scanner, it would bring up your election, you would vote it just like I did, it would then go, it would not come out here, it would then go out the back into a ballot box that's secured, so that's right. machine like that, but not that one. Not this one. It's like that, like this, with a ballot bin underneath it. Okay. So it collects. It collects. As opposed to having to reinsert. Sure. Got it. I'm from Buffalo, and I think we use the M100 right now. You do. Um, I know she went to the Board of Elections to ask for the DS200. Okay. Are we getting trading values on the M100 for this one? We are the only equipment manufacturer that will take that has will take them back because we're the only ones that have needs for it, and we will give a value to a trade in value to any, including your avotronics. It's about enough to buy you a couple dozen donuts. It's it's more than one donut though. Um, and I assume the longer we wait, the less the trade in value is going to be too. That's a great assumption to have. It truly is because <laughs> imagine if you're sitting here next year in Mecklenburg trades in all of their equipment, all of their ivotronics. I think right now we're at 30 something thousand for trading. We did it probably even today. Mm -hmm. but okay, because I think we have a hundred up there for all of it. If I remember have. correctly, and that would be a, a pretty good log going towards it. Sure. That. It would. Yeah. And the, the, the longer you wait, the less, the, the higher the demand is for this equipment, the less the demand is for your existing equipment, the less the value for your trading is. Which is, you know, something to think about when you're budgeting. Okay. Have you run any tests uh, to show for thousand voters mm -hmm. that that touch thing produces less complaints from the voters in the current ivotronics? No specific tests that will show that. I will say that this has been through EAC testing and Wiley laboratory testing, which is expensive. You have to meet certain requirements so if you're to be better. a certified voting system. It's better we don't know by how much. Sure. Okay. Um, I'm trying to think of still with this system as a tabulator, there is still a paper trail, which is something that you don't have other than the RTL printer, which isn't considered the ballot, right? So with your the the reason this is not considered a DRE is because the, the memory is not stored on it. The memory is stored on the flash drive and, and the, on, not on the flash drive here, but the scanner, the tabulator. So, so, so on the 850 read those cards? Yes, it will. Just as quick as it reads the other cards. You paper roll. Okay, here, this is why. Well, it, it, it well, has. It's a, paper it's a paper record. This is going not from the back of your machine on the on on the RTL roll. This is going essentially the the express vote as a tabulator. This with this with the ballot box down here is being seen as this inserted into this. So you have the ballot that's that's printed out. This is to be considered the ballot. Once, not yeah, in its current state, but eventually. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm mm -hmm. the same thing. Right. Just, they're it is. It is attached, but that is not what is being read. No, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. You see, this yes. is considered yes. cast. You you're casting this sheet of paper. That's the distinction. That's the distinction. Okay. Mm -hmm. And that's why it's not considered DRE. It's the closest thing to an ivertronic that's not a DRE. And the people who have ivotronics don't want to go away from the ivotronics. So the way the legislation stands right now, this is the best uh, are situation. Any, are any of the bigger counties pushing for this uh, certification? Everyone. Really in that. Absolutely. Uh, Mecklenburg doesn't want to talk to me until we can put that in front of her. So they're, they're high priority in getting it in front of you guys as well as a tabulator. There are only two that ESNS has. One of them's in testing, the other one's a demo unit. Um, the first time I think we're going to be able to get it in North Carolina, it's not going to be Forsyth next week, but I'll let you know as soon as we, we get it. it. It'll be in March. So when do you think these may be certified by our state? So these as an ADA device? No, as, as a 
in replace of the IVOs? In replace of the IVOs, I can't put a, a time frame on that. I know I mean, that. Do you think by this fall when we do municipals, because or for testing purposes? It's a possibility. Uh, it's going to the EAC next month. The AAC is a lot faster than they have been in the past. It got passed as an ADA device very quickly. What's the EAC? The, the yeah, the elections. It's the federal level. Yes. Okay. It's what has to. There can't be a system in North Carolina that's certified without being EAC certified. Okay. It's Big Brother. Okay. Couple more questions. In the flash drive. What kind of capacity do they have, and how many? Yeah, it's it's you wouldn't be able to touch it. And then and it, how many precincts can you fit? Like say you got a big counties with the one stop size. How many can be coded on one stick? Eighteen. Eighteen. Mm -hmm. And then unlimited amount of ballot styles. More than you would ever get into. Okay. So we would do two for the one stop size. So if we had one of those at the Board of Elections in Nashville. Anybody from the county out of the 100 precincts could go and use that machine for one stop. For one stop. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And their ballot will be there, whether it be printed by a ballot on a man printer or printed, it will, in Nashville, it's printed on, by an on a man printer. Okay. Any more questions about how this would look as a, as a tabulator? Uh, I've got pictures of what it looks like, so I'll, I'll give those to you before I leave. It's it's less cumbersome than your Ivotronic is now. Mm -hmm. um, it rolls. Uh, Does Printelect sell the very large movable storage cabinets that people are pushing now that I've seen? Uh, like the ones they have in Asheville? I haven't seen theirs, but I've been getting some advertising from some folks. I don't Storage. You remember the name? Yeah, I mean it was probably the size of four of those, oh. three or four of those. Yeah, we have a supply cart that will fit one of these on one side, and then it's got, so imagine this shut, it'll mm -hmm. fit one of those, and then it'll have shelv shelving to about here next right. to it, and then, as, you know, you can outfit it as you want. They're red. And then they roll. So it's, you would still have, you would have to get it loaded onto it's going to be so heavy when you load it up before you deploy it, you would have to get a lift gate to put it on there. But yeah, it's, we did that now. Sure. So it would keep everything in it. Mm -hmm. I can I can get you a price on that. Kathy uh, from Madison County was talking to us about um, that you guys recommended mats for these machines that were on carpet. Is that electronic um, static? Um, like hmm. kind of mat she have? recommended those, or no, we no, did. She said that you guys as we were trying to build cost estimates sure. for these things, I'm trying, we're trying to think through what are the things we haven't thought about. That would be um, one so that I have not thought about. It does, it does. Uh, but it, it makes sense, I guess. I mean, yeah, it makes some sense as far as mm -hmm. I it's, it's plastic. Is there any other thing that uh, I noticed was the bin inside the bin mm -hmm. there? Um, are there any other things <coughs> that you sort of recommend or feel like are beneficial um, that we're not maybe aware of right now? The tote bin liner, and then other than that, the, you know, it's it's got to be ready to go outside the box, out of the box. Yeah. So there, there's not that many accessories uh, you want redundancy on your uh, with the flash drives. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, but nothing else major you can think of mm -hmm. in the math and device Sure. Like, well, I can see that. Me if, too. If you recommend it, then you're, you know. So why did the why did the new machine? I'm not sure that that's the case. Yeah, I, I, I don't think the new ones should need the mats, to be honest with you. When I was in the office supply business years ago, we used to sell a chair mat that was wired to take that shop. Mm -hmm. Those have basically disappeared. Most of your equipment today, from my understanding, has been shockproof more yeah. or less. Yeah. Uh, Might be I a suggestion. You don't know about it. Yeah, you know? it's not something that we've, we've been <laughs> selling actively. <laughs> did, did Kathy say she had them? Um, do you guys want to uh, want to try it? 
Yeah, I'd like to see, especially our tech people try it. Sure. I'd like to take that, touch that screen over we've, there. We've tested yeah. them before. We've played with them before. Yeah. All right. How about I just played with them in December. So. Yeah, because essentially, Mr. Chairman, you can mark the ballot and stick it in. <laughs> yeah. Debbie, have you seen that up close? Um, it's, got, it's got, this has brakes on it, so you would, you would click down the brakes so that it's not rolling around. But it is pretty maneuverable once it's on the ground. Are they drop kick tested so that our moving people can't break them? They are drop tested. They get drop tested in the same laboratory that day. Are you going to have 850 in Tampa? Election Center? Is that where it is this year? Yeah. We, uh, ES and S always does. Yeah, I'm going to see it there. 850 you'll see in Winston as well in March if you want to. It'll be in our room. Yeah. Tom, Debbie, anybody? Uh, one question was turn around time on this machine was it work? We could have it to you at the, at their their manufacturer. So they would just have to be shipped in and, and acceptance tested. Which we do in New Bern. And then we ship them here. Are you gonna do the second acceptance testing here or at a warehouse somewhere? In New Bern. And then uh, within your quote is a couple of project management days. Right, yeah, two days for that. Yep, and that'll be training as well. Mm -hmm. uh, product training. Any questions about your quote? No. Okay. So Unity then, uh, I try, I'm trying to think through everything. Unity, we can use the same system, the same OP data printer. Uh, we wouldn't need all those little extra attachments like the PDB reader and all that. We just the flash drive, and so we're going to that's Yeah, the dongle, you wouldn't need those either. You would just plug it into your computer's flash drive. One less thing to worry about. Yeah, a lot less USB ports, I like that. Sure. Okay. Y'all are welcome to try it if you want to. Uh, I do, but I want to yield to my associates first. I don't know what you would do with all your rack and rolls. <laughs> Sell them to a baker. Yeah, a baker. That would be a good place. <laughs> Any sort of prep kitchen. Pizzeria. Pizzeria would be good too. Somebody. So I would take the. Uh, you would take this. The ballot. Just imagine somebody's already.